Congress is in the middle of, at least to some extent, continuing to negotiate for the infrastructure bill. The reconciliation one, the big human infrastructure bill that could massively impact your life, the life of your families, millions of Americans. It is incredibly important. And so if you're Anderson Cooper and you have Bernie Sanders on, a guy who's championed many of the things included in this, of course you're gonna want to ask him about this. Maybe at some point if there's time, but first, Andrew McCabe. But we're gonna show you this video, you see Bernie, he stays on message. Senator Sanders, thank you so much for being with us. Um, just briefly, I'm wondering what you make of what you heard from former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. Did you see his firing at the time as politically motivated? Is this writing a We don't know much about it. What I've been focusing on right now, Anderson, is the need to pass the most consequential piece of legislation in the modern history of this country and demand that the wealthiest people in this country start paying their fair share of taxes so that we can address the long neglected needs of working families. And one of the concerns that I have, you may have read this, is that this legislation is enormously popular, enormously popular. Over 80% of the American people want to lower the cost of prescription drugs. 84% of the American people want to expand Medicare to cover dental, hearing aids and eyeglasses, but you know what? One of the problems we have is that millions of Americans don't know what's in the bill. Because I think Congress has not done a good job. I don't think the president has done a particularly good job. And the media has done a pretty bad job in talking about what is in this legislation. So I have a real concern. People can agree with it, people can disagree with it. But we really have got to know what is in this consequential piece of legislation. We definitely need to. And you can see that Anderson Cooper got a little bit uncomfortable with the fact that Bernie wasn't playing ball with him there for a bit. Um, but look, uh, this is very important. The politics are important, but as Bernie points out, what's actually included in it is important too. And his critique there of the lack of focus on the substance by the media, uh, we now have polling data to indicate that that has been uh, consequential. So I'm gonna dive into a bunch of different aspects of this, but I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to, to opine first. Yeah, there's two fun slash problematic things in there. One is McCabe's now a CIA, I'm sorry, that's hilarious, CNN contributor. He was former head of the FBI. And and so that's Anderson Cooper's bubble. So he's like, oh, the McCabe thing's really important. Let me ask Bernie Sanders about it. And Bernie Sanders is like, no, your Trump drama is not at all important. I'm gonna talk about the bill and I don't really care about your question. So I enjoyed that steamrolling that happened. In the interview, Anderson Cooper also suggested that progressives need to cut priorities. And Bernie Sanders pushed back against that. Now to be fair to Anderson Cooper, that's a legitimate question. And that is among the things that are being asked now, should we cut the number of years or should we cut some of the priorities in the bill? And and so I don't begrudge that question, but of course, you know, the framing matters. and. And and oftentimes progressives are are told, what are you going to do to compromise? But not much is asked of conservative Democrats, corporate Democrats. But you guys know that. So, and of course Bernie did a great job of laying out the different principles in the bill, and 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 he's asking the most relevant question: If these provisions are all incredibly popular, which they are, why aren't we passing it in a democracy? Yeah, Richard, what do you think? Yeah, I'm so glad to see how Bernie handled this. I completely agree. I mean, frankly, I'm not really that interested in covering every little kind of administrative update of these former Trump world people. I think we have so much more important stuff on the on the slate right now. And I'm happy to see Bernie really pivoting to talking about what I think could be such historic legislation for the American people. And I think he's completely right. The fact that Everything in this bill is incredibly popular, but the media really hasn't done a great job of explaining what's in this bill, how it has the potential to really help American families. And so from childcare to infrastructure, to healthcare, to paid leave, this is important stuff. And I think I love that he completely steamrolled Anderson Cooper. He's not really interested in sort of helping to sort of launder this this former Trump person's reputation. I know he has a, a relationship with CNN. Uh, yeah, I, I love to see this and I think Bernie is exactly mm-hmm. right. I think that he's really trying to stand up for the American people who really need what's in this bill. Agreed, yeah, with like I, I vaguely, I remember the Andrew McCabe thing in the beginning. And that was kind of interesting because it was so incredibly petty. Like we don't often see something so petty in American politics. And so that was interesting, him then, then reversing it and then giving him the pension like, 
Okay, I, I'm not friends with him, what do I care at this point? That's just not as interesting, but maybe I'm a shallow guy, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's return to the infrastructure bill because uh, I wanna read through a uh, little bits of information that look, a lot of our members of our audience might be familiar with some of this. But there's been so much of an attempt to distract us on a variety of levels during this debate, making it about a couple of moderates, making it about top line figures and all of that. That I wanna make sure you understand this stuff, including by the way, that 75% of surveyed Democrats in a CNN poll, by the way, so it's the sort of thing that they could bring up there, prefer Congress to quote, pass a bill that enacts all of the proposed social safety net and climate change policies with support for such a package rising to 84% among liberals. So look, for Democrats, it's incredibly popular. We know it's popular in the population at large, but this is a reason to put more pressure potentially on the holdouts. But in Anderson Cooper's defense, it's hard to get cinema on to comment when she's off gallivanting anonymously around Europe and won't even tell us what country she's in. <laughs> but anyway, um, to pay for it, we know that taxing the rich is very popular. I'm gonna bring up this um, chart, feel free to go back later and screenshot it. Anyway, increasing a variety of different taxes to pay for this is incredibly highly supported. With strongly support and somewhat support massively um, overwhelming the opposed numbers there. So people want it, Democrats especially want it. This is what they were promised, they know how to pay for it. And by the way, when you have them rank components of this bill, what's most important for them? Actually, increasing taxes on the wealthy and corporations is like the single most popular part of this for Democrats. And even for Republicans, it ranks very highly up there. If we could go to this next chart. Uh, the next one with all the, the little mini bars, yeah. So the, the text is too small, don't worry about that. But the top line thing is increasing taxes on the wealthy. Democrats love that, but that is one of the most popular components for Republicans as well. And it might well not happen in the bill because cinema and a few others um, don't like it. You'll be shocked to find out that Medicare, dental, vision, hearing expansion is very high up on the list as well. Um, by the way, uh, Republicans, uh, love that even more than Democrats. They cite that as a, a top line, most important thing as well. That's some interesting information, and it's good that people are so supportive of this. But there is bad news as well. And considering that this is basically the only, the only big domestic policy thing that's been discussed for a couple of months now in the US, it's likely to be the last big achievement of the Biden administration for his first term, certainly before the midterms, if it happens at all. When you ask people how much they know about it, only 10% say they know a lot of the specifics. And that's not like the result of a test where we evaluate, now nah, you thought you knew, but you didn't. That's literally just asking people, do you think you know a lot? They might well not, but they don't have much confidence. They have a general sense and some specifics or a general sense and no specifics, despite it being such a more such an important issue for literally months. And I have one more poll result and I fear that that one we just showed you plays into this one quite a bit, which is that only about a third of Americans think the plan would help them directly or help the economy overall. And that includes just 61% of Democrats, even though it's the Democrats bill. It objectively would for tens of millions of Americans and certainly would help the economy. But people don't necessarily get that, even if in the abstract they support basically every provision of it. And why not? The only way that it's been presented to them is that it's too costly, it's too divisive. Why are the progressives pushing for this? Maybe we should cut it, not really focusing on the parts of it that are awesome or that could help a variety of different Americans. Okay. Thoughts? Yeah, so first of all, um, why don't people know what's in this uh, honestly really large bill that has super important provisions, right? And I'll get to one of the provisions in particular in a second. Um, well, there's two reasons. Normally, uh, the way that you find out about provisions in a bill is through the marketing that the two uh, different parties do. If you just wait on the press to cover it, they, they, they won't do that. They cover fights. So if the Democrats or Republicans start a fight, then they'll cover that because they'll find that conflict to be interesting and potentially ratings worthy. So they're not gonna go into a bill and go, look, look at this, look at this, look at this. That's not what our press does at all, right? And so they, they'll do a quick summary and then they'll move on with their lives. So uh, hence, why isn't anybody talking about uh, from the Republicans or Democrats? Well. The Republicans have nothing to attack, and that is not normal. Now, normally, you know, they'll see a proposal for a Green New Deal, and they'll 
find a provision where they'll say, oh, look, by the way, cows produce methane, that's a fact. They don't mm -hmm. say that they're gonna do anything about it. And they will twist that to they're gonna ban hamburgers. <laughs> and they'll try to make the bill about, okay, this is not about helping the planet. This is not about how your kids are gonna die at some point or your grandkids. From uh, by the way, or you, because we're in the middle of climate change due to severe storms, but it's about banning hamburgers, right? Now, Republicans are not doing that in this case because number one, the bill's freaking awesome. That's why we're telling you how popular the provisions are. The Republicans have already seen those polls, and they're like, "Do not talk about paid family leave." Oh my God, that polls so well. If people find out that's in this bill, we can call it a hamburger, we can call it anything we want, but people are gonna want it. So shh. Okay, now the Democrats, why don't they brag about how great the bill is? Number one, their corporate donors have not given them permission because they're in the middle of trying to chop it to pieces, mm -hmm. right? And remember, that's still at least 80% of the Democratic Party. You think Chris Coons, a giant corporate Democrat, is gonna jump out and be like, oh, I will champion this bill about raising corporate taxes. He'd lose half his donors and be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Of course, he's not gonna champion that. Why? The most popular provision is, Raising taxes on corporations, how come no one is talking about it? It's the most popular provision, wouldn't you wanna brag about it? Because the Democrats are also 80% owned by those same corporations. The media are those corporations, they're literally multi-billion dollar corporations. They're not gonna send out their news actors to tell you how great it is to raise their own taxes. Yeah, Like please don't be naive. You know what giant corporations are in the business of? Making money. And if their taxes are raised, they will make billions less overall in in mass. They're not gonna, oh, oh well, out of the goodness of our heart, we should do the real news. <laughs> good one, good one. I haven't seen it yet, right? Mm -hmm. So a, a smaller private company like us, we, we actually do that. That's why you guys like us. But those giant public corporations must maximize profit. And you're not gonna do that by arguing for this bill. That makes you do take uh, some paid family leave, well, back to the mines, they don't want that. And all these other provisions. And finally, Democrats suck at marketing. So they, they're always like, oh, we have a great bill. Let's send out Schumer and Pelosi to mumble about it, Ugh. right? So. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that combination is what leaves you with a, a bill that you would love, but that you hardly know about. <laughs> and whenever we tell you any part of it, you're like, yes. And I say you, not as our progressive audience, but the entire American people. Lastly, sorry, Bridget, I'm taking up so much time, but the the paid family leave. We'll talk about it more later. But it gives you 12 weeks, okay? 12 weeks off if you're gonna have a kid. So there's other provisions in there, but but roughly speaking. Um, when you tell Americans about that, they're like, are you serious? I don't just have to use my sick days? On average, Americans only have seven sick days, including for pregnancy, actual sickness, COVID, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're well, healthy people though. Yeah, right, hilarious. Like when you tell other developed nations some of the laws in America, they're like, no, you must be making that up. I mean, that's so barbaric. That's So you have, you have all of your sick days, the things you get sick, Plus a pregnancy, are you guys insane, right? And those are the provisions. And that's why the Republicans are like, shush, 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 don't tell anybody what's in this bill. And same thing with Mansion and Cinema, because they're trying to butcher the best parts of the bill in favor so that their donors can write them more checks. That's literal. Yeah, I mean, you said it, I completely agree. I think that it's, you know, that poll, John, that you were just reading about how many Democrats don't think this would make a big impact in their lives was so depressing. And I think it really goes to show this really deep marketing problem that we have on the left. And I think it's really interesting what we as Americans have accepted as or, or like what we think of as being too expensive and what we think of as like, oh, we need that. So we can talk about like military spending all day long and nobody talks about like, oh, it's too expensive. We're not even prime to frame it that way. But when it comes to something that will actually have a tangible impact to most Americans lives, we automatically just accept that it's too expensive, can't afford it, it's a problem, this and that. And so I think that really is reflective of exactly what you were just talking about, this idea that we have a real marketing problem. And I think sending folks out to mumble about this bill is not gonna cut it. I think if people find out that this bill could really get the United States on par with, with every other developed nation in the world, I think people might start perking up and yeah. saying, hey, that actually would help me. But this idea that it's not going to make a difference to, to most folks, that makes me so sad. And I think it's indicative of what a bad job some folks on the left have done in terms of talking about this bill and marketing this bill. So I completely agree. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna make one small note, John, about that because there's a silver lining in there. 61% of Americans think that it is not going to benefit them personally. 
But 75% of Americans are in favor of it anyway. I mean, imagine yeah, what that's that, nice. That's that's awfully <laughs> nice of them. Seriously, so there's a little bit of hope in the decency of the American people. Yeah. Uh, and wait till they find out it actually does help them directly. Yeah. And then that 75 might be 95%. Yeah, and I wonder, like, would would Biden do anything other than mumble? I guess if he was touring the country. Mm. You would you would want him to at least try though. I really I, I try to acknowledge that I'm I'm probably in a bubble. I don't have CNN on all day. And so I don't it is possible that Biden is doing a lot of stuff that I'm not seeing in terms of going out there and doing no. rallies or whatever. But I it really does feel like I don't know why he wanted to be president. <laughs> He's not doing anything really. Like he's not even he's not even trying and failing. That might at least be funny to watch. He's really just not it like in terms of legislation, I guess he hoped that there'd be no cinema because as soon as there's a cinema, nope, guess we can't do anything with all of the things he could potentially do via, you know, executive orders, executive actions. Like we've got a commission. Someday I hope it comes through and we got something good we can do, but I just don't see it. And and in terms of the media failing in this, like there's a lot of good reasons that they've failed. Partial, I think a good part of it is what Jenk was saying. They like the conflict of it. It's easy to talk about, and it's more dramatic. People desperately want people to pay attention to what they're making, so you make it dramatic. And telling people about the contents of a bill is not dramatic. That's why so few people really cover it. But also, Media Matters has a study out showing how little cable news has covered the fact that fossil fuel industries are trying to weaken the climate provisions of this bill. And why wouldn't they, those fossil fuel companies, advertise on CNN and MSNBC? Same for things like Medicare expansion and negotiating on farm, on um, on prescription drugs and things like that. Those companies also advertise on those networks. So, in the same way that we can't expect expect Mansion to kill the coal industry when that would personally hurt his finances, why would these big networks? Like be really in favor, like rah 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 on a bill that's gonna harm some of their biggest advertisers. We can't be surprised by it, but we do need to make sure that people know that part of this is going on. Yeah, last thing I'll say real quick to answer the mystery of why Biden wanted to be president. John, you're a really decent, wonderful person. So you think I would like to get some things done and for the American people, etc. 99% of politicians do it for the ego, that's it. Period, and his idea of fighting for something is it just this is his history in the Senate. You could look it up. Is going and making deals where Republicans win on anywhere from eighty to ninety-five percent of the issues. His like his mo his his whole career has been basically surrender mm -hmm. and call disguised as negotiations. So here he's not sure who who he should surrender to. <laughs> he's like, well, I'm trying to play the surrender card, but. Who do I give it to? Mm -hmm. And so when you give it to Cinema and Mansion, they go, oh, "Thank you very much." Now I'm killing your bill, the one that you named your whole campaign after, right? And he's like, "Wait, I didn't want that." And he's flummoxed, and I think he literally doesn't know what to do. I was just gonna say, I mean, I think you're exactly right, and I think it's so sad because this is what the American people voted for. We want this. We went to the polls and we voted for this, and it's just pretty depressing that it seems like I, I agree. It's like people are floundering and we're not getting the thing that we voted for, the flagship, the flagship piece of legislation that we all wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that we, a lot of folks on the left, it happens on the right too, get, get, have theories about how people are evil and they act this way and that way on purpose and there, there's secret geniuses manipulating things behind the scenes. No, you'd be surprised. Generally, they don't know what they're doing at all, even all the way up to the president. And so when faced with this kind of intransigence, I don't think Joe Biden, even, even though he's taking corporate money his whole life, I don't think he fully comprehends the power that the donors have over fellow Democrats. And he's confused by it. And he's never thought through how do, how do I defeat that, especially when I'm in the vulnerable position of also taking corporate money. How do I get beyond that problem? It literally might be beyond his capacity. And I know that people in Washington would find that deeply offensive because they're supposed, you're supposed to hero worship of the powerful, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and anything that isn't ass kissing of the powerful seems like outrageous to people in Washington. Like if they heard me now, they'd ban me forever. They'd be all canceled. You're saying that Biden might not be smart enough? How 
dare you? Don't you know that he is the president and you must bow down to him? He's the leader of the Democrats. No, he look, I'm actually trying to do him a favor. Because if he knows what he's doing, then it's way worse. Mm -hmm. Right, then he's like, oh, donors, let's play a game where we all lie to our voters at the same time. And I get Manchin to pretend and cinema to pretend. Oh, golly gee, I want to build back better. Oh, but I guess there was nothing we could do, right? <laughs> and so I genuinely think that isn't it. I don't think he's that evil. But in terms of you know brightness, that's a different issue, and that's keeping it real. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.